Hey guys, I'm Rich from Neowin, and today we're unboxing the Dynabook Portage X30L-G. Um, not the most uh, friendly name that just rolls off the tongue, but this tends to be the case with some business laptops. Dynabook only makes business laptops, so that's exactly what this is. That's why you get a box that looks like this. You know, like business laptops tend to come in, uh, you know, those sort of bland cardboard boxes because really... The truth is that um, the people using them don't actually see the box. They, um, you know, IT, they're also easily stackable. Um, so IT just kind of gives you the PC and, and that's that's all you ever get to see. So we're going to get this out of the box. Now, what's cool about this is that it's 1.92 pounds. And that means that it is the lightest 13-inch laptop. Uh, that has Intel's 10th generation core processors. There's only one 13-inch laptop that I know of that's lighter. Um, Lenovo partnered with NEC to bring those laptops to the United States. That was announced at CES as well. That one's 1 1.85 pounds, but that uses 8th gen processors. So this guy has a Core i5-10210U processor. And, um, you know, I, I noted, the, here's the reason that is Comet Lake. Like I said, Dynabook only makes business laptops. Now, um, that means they're going to need vPro. vPro was only announced yesterday, <laughs> literally yesterday from the day that I'm recording this. Um, it's weird because a lot of Comet Lake vPro laptops were announced back in January at CES. It's May now, I know. But the thing is, there's not going to be an Ice Lake vPro. So this one is not a vPro processor in here, but they do need to have vPro variants of it. All right, so take a look at some of the stuff that's in the box. We got some paperwork here, and I usually just throw away paperwork, but there's a little Dynabook informational pamphlet that I'm seeing here that actually looks kind of cool. Um, it says, some of our favorite innovations, okay? Uh, 1985, world's first laptop. 1991, world's first TFT color display. 1993, world's first laptop with lithium-ion battery. 1995, world's first integrated optical drive. 1998, uh, world's first integrated DVD. 2002, first uh, G NVIDIA GeForce 4 laptop. 2007, world's first wireless docking. 2008, first laptop with a quad-core HD processor. 2011, world's lightest 13.3-inch laptop. Something that they're trying to revisit, I guess. <laughs> 2012, world's thinnest and lightest tablet. 2014, world's first 4K laptop. 2018, world's first Windows 10 Pro AR smart glasses. Okay, so you see Dynabook's done a lot of stuff, right? And this is uh, this is Toshiba's brand. They don't call it Toshiba anymore. It's just called Dynabook now, but... But um, that's where they're at. And they've been a around a very long time. They've done a lot of very cool stuff. And I'll tell you, at CES, at their booth, they had a lot of those really old laptops on display. <laughs> and some of them said, do not touch on them, but they let me touch them. So, I mean, it was very cool. I mean, I mean, if you're watching this video, you're probably something of a computer enthusiast. So, like, you, you could probably get behind a lot of that, that history that's there. And um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. So here's the laptop. There's a lot of plastic and such. And we're just gonna pull this off. Now let's just take a look. We got a charger in here, and it's your standard uh, square brick. If I can get it out, um, and I assume this is a 65 watt charger. Okay, and then of course there's that power cable. That's all that comes in the box. Um, this PC, this model that they sent me, has a full HD screen, no touch. So um, it's not a convertible or anything. So, you know, pen support's not happening. Okay. It's made out of magnesium alloy. Okay. Um, and I, I almost kind of laugh when I say that because anything this light has to be made out of magnesium. Uh, aluminum is a very heavy material that goes in laptops. Um, you can't hit this weight with aluminum, but what's pretty cool is that it actually feels nice. I almost, I almost wanted to guess that the top part was kind of coated in some kind of metal, but I don't think it is. Um, 
because it feels premium. One of the problems with magnesium laptops is that they feel like plastic. You could take something like an LG Gram, um, some of Acer's Swift laptops, and if I hand it to you and I, I said, what do you think this two and a half pound, two and a quarter pound laptop is made out of, you would say it's plastic, but it's not, it's magnesium. But that's how you hit that weight. Um, you can machine magnesium to make it feel more premium. This absolutely feels more premium. And it's also tough. And that's what's cool about magnesium. Like it doesn't feel great all the time, but it is tough. Most of these magnesium laptops do pass uh, mil STD 810G um, testing, which um, which means that it can stand up to a lot. I'll tell you, at CES, um, I mean, I'll, I'll link to my hands-on article from CES uh, in the description, but they actually had a 100-pound weight sitting on top of one of these just, just to show that it can do that, you know? And then in another... In another area, which was, this one was actually under a glass case for good reason, they actually had this thing floating um, using a magnet. And what's, um, it's just, it's light enough to do that. So they could put a magnet under it and it was actually floating in this glass case. So obviously that has to be in a glass case because if anybody touches it, it just, you know, but it was very cool. You can see this comes in a nice shade of blue and it's got some silver accents on the hinge, which is nice. I, um, I, I, I like colored magnesium laptops. Like it makes it pretty. It adds a, a very nice touch to the design because a lot of these magnesium laptops come in this really bland sort of gunmetal gray color. That's, uh, you know, there's nothing really special about it. So I do like the blue. I like the blue and silver combination. I think it looks nice. Uh, over here, we've got uh, two USB type A ports, full size ethernet. Okay, so we're not making compromises there. All right, we've got um, USB type C, HDMI, micro SD, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And oh, I guess that charger was actually a barrel charger, which is quite annoying. I sure hope that we can charge via USB type C because that would be a real pain point if we can't. So let's boot it up. You can see we have some more silver accents around that power button under the trackpad. And you know, I gotta say, one thing I'm not a fan of with Dynabook laptops is that the fingerprint sensor, although it, it does have an, an IR camera, but the fingerprint sensor is built into the trackpad over here. It's kind of annoying because um, this is not sensitive as part of the trackpad. So if you try to drag and drop, you're actually skipping a touch point over here and uh, it, 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 it can be a bit of a pain. All right, and just for an example of that, you can see, if you take a look at the cursor on the screen, if I move around, it just stops when I hit that fingerprint sensor. So that's kind of a pain. The good news is you can in fact charge through the USB type C port so we can just get rid of this, but at least we know it works, which is uh, a super important thing if you ask me. Um, that's that's probably one of my top, it's one of those features that, that I can't do without on a laptop. Now, it is a USB 3.1 Gen 1 uh, type C port, which is fine as far as I'm concerned, unless you're planning on hooking up a, um, you know, an external GPU to it or something, or hooking up multiple 4K monitors. But um, I don't know that this is the type of machine to, to hook up, you know, two 4K monitors or a 5K monitor to it because it doesn't even have a dedicated GPU or or a CPU with Iris Plus graphics. So, um, like I said, Iris um, <laughs> IR camera up at the top. So you do get facial recognition and you do get a fingerprint sensor. And that's the other thing that bums me out about the fingerprint sensor. Like, if you're like me, you're gonna use the IR camera most of the time anyway, so um, I really don't like that there. They could have just put it in this very pretty power button that's up at the top here, you know. Um, most of the stuff, um, you know, a lot of the, the stuff here feels kind of standard. I just switched it back to, um, the uh, the stock background that comes with this because for some reason uh, I recently reviewed the Galaxy Book S and it you know Windows Sync Windows Settings Sync just 
sucks. And it, it just keeps trying to put that background on all of my PCs. But anyway, a lot of this stuff feels pretty standard. Like, this keyboard, it's not particularly quiet or anything. The keys aren't particularly comfortable. Like, I also just reviewed HP's Elite Dragonfly, which is very much in a similar class to this one. It's a 13.3 inch magnesium business laptop, and it weighs in at, you know, on average, two and a quarter pounds. It's like, I think it's uh, about 2.2 pounds if you get the smaller battery and two and a half pounds if you get the bigger one. And that's a convertible, so you can take that extra weight. And that has a best in class keyboard, which is very important for businesses. Um, but again, this is as light as it goes. And if you're looking for light, this is kind of the, like the best option that there's, I mean, under two pounds, like if you're looking at PCs under two pounds, your options are that NEC one that I mentioned earlier, which has a last gen processor. And then of course, then you could go Y series, which is like an Acer Swift seven, but you're compromising a lot in terms of performance. Now, you don't get a 180 degree hinge. This is as far as the display goes back, which I think is fine. I've never quite understood the appeal of 180 degree hinges, but they are very popular on business laptops. So uh, that's just something to be aware of. Okay, now the reason that I call out that under two pound weight is because that's that's really, that is not just the big selling point. It's um, without it, um, this thing doesn't stand out as much and it's not an inexpensive device. So really it's, it's the fact that it's under two pounds, like, like the keyboard, it's okay. It's passable. You know, it's not like there's a compromise there or anything. Like it's not something like those super thin ones where you get these super narrow keyboards or super shallow keyboards. It's fine. You know, but you got that fingerprint sensor in the trackpad. I have no idea who who made that decision or why, but it's there. Um, that's feels like more of a compromise, even though clearly it's, it's meant to be more of a feature than a bug. But, you know, if this thing weighed two and a half pounds, I don't think I could give you an actual reason to buy this instead of, say, an Elite Dragonfly or a Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon. So, really, you have to want that 1.92 pound clamshell form factor. Now, I've spoken to a lot of people who say, I don't care about thin and light. I mean, it matters. If you're on the go, if you're, if you, you know, if, if, if you're a business person that travels a lot, you know, if, if you just, if you just going to throw this thing in a bag and carry it around, like a guy like me goes to events like Microsoft Build or CES, and I'm carrying a laptop for, you know, 12 hours, um, something that's so light, this is something, like, if you've never carried around a two-pound laptop, you put it in your bag, and, like, an hour later, you're going to check back in your bag and be like, wait, did I leave this thing at home? Because it feels like there's nothing in there. Because it feels like there's nothing in there. You know, so so um, take a five-pound laptop, you know, or even a four-pound laptop, a Dell XPS 15. You put that in your bag. After 12 hours, it feels like a 10-pound laptop that's been sitting on your shoulders, Okay. It's a huge difference. So if you travel, if you carry a laptop, like if portability means something to you, then this might be something you would look at as that 1.92 pound option. And uh, that's all I got, guys. I'm going to have a review on this in a couple weeks. So stay tuned. I'm Rich from Neowin. Have a great night.